Hey guys, welcome back to another Skyrim Mods video. Today I got a mix of new-ish mods, not old mods at least, that I've added to my game and kind of fell in love with. So I can confidently say I won't be removing these unless I happen to completely delete my entire list and start over, which I sometimes do quite often. But if you guys end up liking this video or maybe finding a mod you didn't know about beforehand, then make sure you hit that like button down below and maybe subscribe. But other than that, let's dive right in. Oh, and make sure you endorse mod authors. They kind of deserve it. The first mod up, and most likely the newest mod of this list, I kind of add more as I go, but this first mod is called Diverse Tanning Racks. This mod firstly retextures and remeshes every tanning rack around Skyrim, so you don't get the boring vanilla one, but it also goes a step further by adding diversity, and it does it by using Base Object Swapper for compatibility reasons. So these racks will quite literally change every time you load up a new game. This mod based on the mod author's words has 7 frames and each one has at least 3 variants and up to 7 for a max variant. I'm not going to do the math on that, but that's definitely a lot of variation to me. The rack itself in cities won't change, but the pelt on the racks will change, which is what causes the most diversity in this mod. Like I usually say, it's the small things that really matter when it comes to modding. This is one of those cases where they say you don't know what you really want until someone shows you it, and this is something I didn't know I needed until now but at least now it won't be leaving my mod list. But moving on, we have an armor that you can't even get on Nexus. This mod is called the Sartorial Sorcery Robe Set. This mod adds a new mage theme armor and also clothing set to your game. This mod comes with four tiers to the armor. There's two clothing variants that really have no difference besides aesthetic. And then there's the light armor variant and also a heavy armor variant. Each set uses vanilla assets, so it will use whatever texture you're currently using. But it also uses creation club content like the silver armor, so you will need that or else something will end up purple unfortunately. And another quick note is that this armor also isn't distributed to the levelless or using spit. But I am currently working on a sky patcher for it so conjurers like you see at Fort of Maul can wear them. Because they only usually wear necromancer robes so that can be really boring. So I really think this could fit them. And I probably didn't mention it but each variation of this set has multiple different colors, about 6 in total. So there is a lot of variation, but the only bad part is that none of these are color labeled, so it's going to be a little complicated to make sets. So if someone wants this guy to patch it for me, that'd be greatly appreciated. But up next, we have another mod by the same mod author, also not on Nexus. This mod is called Painted Shields. This mod is painted shields to your game, just like the title says, that both comes in light shield and heavy shield variants. But unlike the previous mod, this one is injected into the level list, so you will sometimes see bandits wearing these shields. I'm not entirely sure what resolution the pictures are in for these shields, but they look great up close and far away. The best part though I would say is that even though they do have a medieval design which was pretty dark, there's no nudity or over sexualization, so this could blend right into your Skyrim. This is definitely just one of those mods I added so I can have some type of difference in my game because shields kind of all look the same. And now moving on to the next mod. This one is for the Dawnguard main characters. Well, only two of them. This mod is called Lord and Lady of Volkahar. And this one is for Harkon. This mod replaces Harkon with pretty much Detloff from The Witcher. And people who played and loved that game might find it weird to see him in Skyrim. But I feel like this fits Harkon perfectly. And so for reference, I use my Apocalypse All Vanilla NPCs just to do a side by side to show the difference. Mainly due to the fact that Valerica was also massively changed by this mod. But Valerica was replaced with the character Sayana. They don't look completely like they do in Witcher 3 due to conversions to Skyrim, but they still look pretty amazing. The main reason I use these is because I love adding extra details to important NPCs in Skyrim, so they don't look like everyone else. But another NPC change I'm going to do isn't really a face replacer but instead an armor replacer for those tired of half-naked Forsworn. This mod is called Fear the Forsworn. I'm going to be completely honest, I'm not sure if I've showcased this before, but it definitely needs some attention. This mod uses vanilla assets and some of the mod author's own magic to give new armors to Forsworn. These aren't standalone, it completely replaces the vanilla Forsworn outfits and also adds one new heavy armor variant, so there is one standalone. Of course, there was more added, but these changes to the Forsworn clothing was more than enough to make me want it. It still keeps their brutal culture on their clothing like the skulls, you can still clearly see them. 
but it at least gives them something to wear that looks like and feels like armor. I used to think I was alone and tired of seeing so much skin showing in Skyrim, hence why I use sleeves in Skyrim. But now I know there are people who would love this mod, so I'm showcasing it. The only unfortunate part about this mod I would say is that it hasn't been updated in a little while, it just came out earlier this year. But also the fact that there's no body slide support considering this is a replacer. And because it hasn't been updated, no support for 3BA and Himbo were made over time. But I guess it wouldn't be too hard to make this a standalone version and then sky patch it since the outfit's already made. But for me, this is the perfect outfit for Forsworn and I always use it in my mod list now. Up next, taking a step away from armors, we have a small mod called Vibrant Weapons. I have to do a showcase of this mod to showcase what I really want to showcase next, but this one is still a must have mod. This mod has new animated enchantment effects to the shock, frost, and fire enchantments. Or you can just keep it vanilla, it isn't really 100% needed for the next mod, but they make for the perfect combo. I really do hope Vibrant Weapons gets enhanced in the future or maybe someone makes an unofficial add-on that adds new effects to new enchantments. But honestly, I only ever use these three enchantments anyway. But I have to admit, an absorbed health animation would look insane. But the next mod that I wanted to mention was this mod Precision Magic Trails. To simply explain this mod, if you use Precision and have the trail effect turned on in an MCM, when you swing with the weapon enchantment, a magic trail will follow making it look absolutely amazing. And hence why I advise to combine Vibrant Weapons with this since the enchantment effects kinda look exactly the same between these two mods. Of course this mod works without Vibrant Weapons, but it just doesn't feel complete without it. And of course the magic trails work on every other enchantment in Skyrim, it's just that these three when combined together for the shock, fire, and frost just kinda look amazing. It might be a known combo, but I don't see anyone using it during gameplays. But up next, another magic effect changer. This mod is called Undead FX. This mod makes it so when you or NPCs around you reanimate an NPC, they will revive, but instantly start decaying and start looking like a Draugr. If you have Draugrs by Mandra, Xtudo made a patch for this mod so they will use that mod textures, which is generally what I go for, but I wanted to show the original version so you'll know what you'll be getting with this mod. But there's also an alternate version to this zombie look, instead their skin will start falling completely off. And now they'll start showing bones underneath their skin, and as time goes on more and more skin will start to fall off but it'll leave a cool little magic effect on them. Until of course they start looking completely like skeletons. And the skeleton underneath will always match the character skeleton so even beasts or animals will have this effect. Of course that means a lot more patching though, hence why that option is turned off. Moving on to a new mod I recently fell in love with, this mod is called Stress and Fear by Jay Serpo. This mod makes it so after all those long battles and near death experiences in Skyrim, your character will now accumulate stress that will give you debuffs until you get rid of the stress. It comes in about 3 tiers and each tier takes more alcohol to go down if you prefer to go that way or you can just relax at a regular inn. So just sitting down will do but it will take a bit of time if you're just sitting there or you can just go all in and just get your character drunk. So it's pretty easy to get rid of stress because you don't have to be in the end to lower it, you just have to have a lot of alcohol on you. And the second part of this mod is the fear system. This system makes it so if you have a near death experience, there's a 20% chance your character may develop a fear or phobia of what you are fighting. And when I say near death, I mean very low health about 10%, and this fear can develop against pretty much anything in vanilla. The great part is that the debuff only appears while you're fighting the animal, so if you miss the notification, you probably won't even know you have a fear because it won't show up in the active effects until combat starts. This next mod is a bit of self-torture, I won't lie. This mod is called City Bag Checks. This mod at base makes it so there's a 10% chance guards will stop you and ask to check your belongings for illegal things. You're going to regret saying that. The only mistake was you showing your face. You've committed crimes against Skyrim and her people. And it's time to face the Jarl's justice. You're going to rot in the Dragon's Reach dungeon. The interaction can pretty much go any way you lead it. You can persuade the guard to let you go, or you can try to intimidate them and end up in jail with all your illegal things gone, plus some gold. So now anytime you have a human heart or skooma, you run the risk of having a guard randomly checking you and getting arrested. You can also change the chance of the checks from 10% if you prefer. I changed it up to 100 out of boredom. Up next we have a carriage mod. Well I guess technically not for carriages, but more so an immersive new travel system. 
This mod is called Wait Carriages and Inns. This mod essentially for any town that has an inn, you can walk into them and just speak to the barkeeper or owner and ask them to wait for a carriage. And this works great for cities that don't really have a carriage and you don't want to use extra mods to add them. But like I say, even if that city has a carriage, you can still activate this mod. All you have to do is sit down and the carriage driver will walk in. They are randomly generated so they will all look a little different from each other, which is the best part. But all you have to do is get up and speak to them and it will pretty much take you to any city or town you ask them for. So they do have more options than vanilla carriage drivers also. There is one more mod I would like to add onto this but I'm going to save that for the next video just so I can make it longer. But that was pretty much it for today guys. I hope you ended up enjoying this video and maybe finding some mods you didn't know about. But I hope you all have a great rest of your day and don't forget to endorse mod authors. Peace and love guys.